The debt origin goes back to the colonization. Actually, the colonization started with Tunisia having debt toward France and not being able to pay debt. Then Tunisia became a pro protectorate of France and the colonization started. Um, after the colonization in 1956, we inherited that debt and then came a president for life that started to you know, take loans from the IFIs, implementing the same old neoliberal policies um, in the interest of the global market and not necessarily in the interest of local agriculture and industrialization. After Bourguiba came a dictator, Ben Ali, who took loans, took money from Europe, from France, from uh, a lot of creditors, and we don't know where that money went because Ben Ali had like a police state and there was no transparency. We have no idea where the money came from. So we had question whether that debt is illegitimate or not, and that's the reason why we're asking a debt audit. From colonization debt to um, dictatorial debt, we enter after the revolution in a, a circle of debt because of a worsening situation of the economy, but also because uh, after the revolution, Tunisia became very unstable. We didn't have a stable government, and all the creditors and all the countries were swift to propose, you know, uh, economic reform package, and that worsened our debt in Tunisia. When new creditors, countries and IFIs, the World Bank and the IMF, um, they, they participated greatly after the revolution because the sense that in Tunisia was very unstable and was the perfect moment to implement this liberalization. So right, uh, right after the revolution in May 2011, they did a meeting and they created the partnership of Deauville, uh, actually the G7, uh, with the support of IMF and the World Bank to propose a whole reform package to the whole region not just Tunisia, but also Egypt and Syria and Yemen and Libya. This whole package is, uh, you know, classical reforms of austerity, but also liberalization, so lifting the barrier, decreasing subsidies, uh, opening the markets, uh, not really in the interest of Tunisian economy, but, but in the interest of globalization to absorb European crisis. Um, it was not just, the influence was not just proposing this package, it was also proposing aid that is conditioned, conditioned to that reform uh, and loans too, but also they pushed us to change our laws and that to me was the most dramatic because I'm sitting in the finance committee and I saw a law for PPP, the public-private partnership, that was not even written by Tunisians because there was a lot of legal mistakes and we discovered it was, you know, written uh, by a consulting company contracted by the World Bank. So you, there is like an interference in our laws. There is this uh, will to really transform Tunisia into a neoliberal economy right after the revolution. So it was really tough for us to resist to that lobby because in Tunisia we're not used to articulate an economic vision. So we're struggling actually to voice these alternatives because there's such a powerful lobby from the IFIs and the countries to implement this liberal plan. And you know, countries who have actually pushed forward this new way, this new economic vision, they suffer from bad PR. The other thing that makes it really difficult is Tunisia not only is facing a debt crisis, but also is uh, facing a financing crisis. So we have no choice than accepting the money from the IMF, and the money from the IMF is tied to condition. And we were hoping that there will be more opportunities for, uh, for financing, like Banco del Sur or BRICS. All these alternatives are not uh, created yet. What is really ironic with this whole system is the IFIs sits on a model of free competition, but ironically, there is no competition to the IMF and the World Bank. They have the same neoliberal vision, and we don't have another World Bank, another IMF, with a different vision. And that, that for me, for the future, it will be really important. But I think one of the you know, institutions that is failing um, is the United Nations. Because the United Nations mission is to assure 
peace and security on, in the world. And you know, like what the IMF and the World Bank is doing in the end with this, with this, uh, you know, plans for e liberal economy, it's increasing the discrepancy between the poor and the rich in the world. And that creates uh, instability and civil war and poverty. And this is really, uh, you know, a threat to uh, the world security and the world peace. So we're really hoping that the, the, the UN, you know, is reformed and play its role of, as a watchdog and is able to tell the, EU, the EU, for example, well, don't tie your aid to these bad conditions. This is not in the interest of the Tunisian people. This is an interest of the global uh, market. So this is what, you know, what we're hoping for the future, I hope.